Highlight your footage and go to the Fusion tab. Then highlight your media in and press Ctrl space to open your toolbox. Type Planner Tracker and click Add. In the inspector on the preference time select Set. Below that on Motion type select Translation. While the tracker node is still highlighted you can go over the area which you want to track. And when you finish fully marking your area select Play from the beginning from this button. It will take you a couple of seconds to track everything until the end. And when it's finished tracking, select on operation mode stabilize. And in order to stabilize, it's gonna zoom out of the video. You want to get the transform node between planner tracker and media out and increase the values of size until all the transparency area is not visible. From the effects from effects library, you can get adjustment clip. Leave it in between your clips where you want this transition to happen. Adjust the length, I'm using 1 second. Then go to open effects and look for waviness and then drag it and drop it over that adjustment clip. The default setting is good enough. Then make a little bit of fading from both sides on that adjustment clip and drag and drop across this off in between the video clips. And if you want to use this transition again, just copy it on the next one. Highlight your footage and go to the Fusion tab. Then disconnect the link between Media In and Media Out. Then add Shape 3D and Render 3D and connect all four nodes to each other. Then highlight your Shape 3D and go to the Inspector. Then you can change the Shape Mode to Sphere. Then still in the Inspector go to the Transform and on the Z values on the Transform to about minus 2 until you see the whole planet. And then if you want to make it rotate you can create a keyframes on YZ rotation while your timeline head is in the beginning. Then go 50 frames forward and change the Y, Z values of your liking. It all depends where you want this pin to end. In my case, it's stopping 50 frames after its beginning. And I wanna put a little bit of zoom. So I'm going 10 frames before. In my case, that is the 40th frame. And I'm creating a keyframe on the transform Z. And now I just need to make the end point of that zoom. So I'm going to the 49th frame. And then I'm increasing the values of Z on transform. In my case, the values are 0.2. And this is the final result. Because we think eight presets on your radio is seven too many. So this is my raw footage. I'm gonna make a duplicate on audio track number two. I'm gonna highlight the second one, going to the specter and reducing the values of cent to minus one. Because we think eight presets on your radio is seven too many. Just by doing this, I already make the voice go deeper, but I'm going further and making a copy on the first one and leave it on audio channel number three. Then highlight it, go to effects and select pitch, and I'm gonna reduce the values of semitones to minus five. It is over the top, so I reduce the values of the decibels to minus 18. Because we think eight presets on your radio is seven too many. Highlight your video footage and go to the Fusion tab. Then take a fast noise node, which is creating a merge node. Highlight the fast noise and go to the inspector. You can play around with the settings to make it look more like a steam. And when you're done adjusting the steam settings, you can take a polygon node from here, leave it over the fast noise and connect it to it. Then highlight this polygon node and select the area which you want this theme to be. In my case, I'm going from the edges of the cup until the end of the screen. And once you're finishing with that masking, you're gonna notice a big difference between this theme and the background. So you want to highlight the polygon and make a softer, so increase the values of soft edge to make it more natural. Now it's looking good, but it's not moving, so we need to make some basic keyframes. So I'm making a keyframes on the center and the seat. Then I'm going to the end of the timeline and I'm increasing the values of that center and the seat. And the higher the end values, the faster it's gonna be steaming. And this is the final result. Highlight your footage and go to the Fusion tab, select your media in, press Ctrl space and add a tracker. Then highlight this tracker, press Ctrl space and add another tracker. Then highlight the second one and press Ctrl space to add a third one. Then highlight the first tracker and adjust the rectangle over the places where you want to be tracked. And then press this play button on the right side to the inspector. After a few seconds it will be all tracked. Then I'm highlighting the second one and I'm doing the same also with the third one. 
if some of the tracking is not accurate you can run it again or fix it manually frame by frame now i'm adding three text notes over every other tracker and connecting the first note to the first one second to the second and third to the third one and of course you can highlight the text and type what you want then i'm highlighting the first tracker which is for the girl and in the inspector i'm going to operation and i'm changing it to match move then i'm highlighting the first text which is for the first tracker i can manually move the text over her head and i'm doing the same for the other two kids just remember if you want to see the text you have to go in every tracker and change the operation to match move. I'm having some basic text on the timeline and I want to animate it a little bit. So I highlight it, go in the beginning of the timeline and creating a keyframe on the zoom values. Before that, I'm putting it to zero. Then I'm going four frames forward and I'm creating a second keyframe with the values of zoom of 1.150. And because I want to make it bounce back a little bit, I'm making one frames forward and I'm reducing the values of zoom to 1.1. And for the last time, I'm making one frame forward and I'm increasing by a tiny bit to about 1.13. And that way you can create this smooth pop-up text. And if you're using it as a subtitle, you can just hold out and copy it to the next one without having to do again these keyframes. You can just change the text. And of course, if you want to go slower, instead of starting with four frames, you can start with 10. But everything else remains the same. Highlight your video footage and go to the color tab. Then select this window right here. And then this window will show up. Then you want to grab this pen and go over the edges of the screen to create a mask. Which in most cases it will take you just 4 clicks. And when you're done selecting all the screen, you can select this icon right here, which it says invert. Now you want to go to the right side on your node 3, right click and select add alpha output and connect your node to it. And now you're halfway there, you can just go to the edit tab, put this video footage on video slot number 2. Then drag and drop your footage which you want to be in the screen, leave it on video slot number 1. Select the transfer icon and you can adjust it on the same place where the screen is. And after you adjusted the size of that screen and fit it into a place, you can further upgrade it in the inspector because if the footage is like this, which is not straight up, you can use the pitch and yaw to make it more realistic just because the screen is not facing the camera straight. And this is the final result. I'm selecting one of my videos on the timeline, going to inspector and change the values of zoom to 0.450, then changing the values of rotation x to 450. Now I highlight the other video, going to inspector again and change the values of zoom to 0.450 and this time on position x to minus 450. That way I have perfectly aligned videos side by side. I'm using this picture just for a background, so I go to the Fusion tab and I'm adding a merge node in between media in and out. Also, I'm getting text 3D, merge 3D and render 3D. And then I'm connecting all these three together and render 3D into a merge one. Then I'm pressing Ctrl space and I'm looking for directional light. I'm connecting that to merge 3D. Then I'm highlighting the text and I'm inputting my text inside. I think the keyboard number one so I can see it on the left side. You can see that right now it's still flat. You can change the position of it by moving this tool inside of it. Now highlight direction light and you want to pull this tool right here. You want to leave the light in front of the text because we're gonna use the shadow later. Now I'm gonna preview it on the side so you can see that it's still flat. We want to add some depth to it. So I'm highlighting the text. And on the bottom side of the inspector, on the expression depth, you want to increase the values of that to make this letter thicker. And once you did everything, you want to highlight this render 3D and enable the lighting and the shadow. And you're having the 3D text. And then you can highlight your text 3D. And then in the inspector, go in transform and you can create a keyframes of your liking. If you like this type of content, make sure to watch this video. I'm showing more quick effects in DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.